Today's the day to start framing the deck. So I'm getting it laid out right now. This is going to be my ledger board. A ledger board is just a piece of wood that hooks to your house, bolted to your house to support your deck. I have all my joist hangers laid out. I just laid out my lag bolt locations. I'm gonna start these. I'm trying to do as much prep work as I can on the ground because it's easier than doing it on the wall. Right now I'm just gonna partially drive my lag bolts. I shouldn't say lag bolts, I'm actually using lag screws. They're called ledger lock. So now the spacing on these lag screws might seem odd, but that's the way it's supposed to be done, building science and all. Basically, it's all calculated by the length of your joists and the size of your decking material. We can actually get away with up to 30 inches between each bolt. I'm doing about 24 inches, so this is actually gonna be overkill for what's necessary. Wow, so I think I'm actually done. So let's get this on the wall, get it leveled up, Okay, hold it now. Alright, you can let go, baby. She's like struggling. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna go like this, like this. Push it. What? Push it. Like that? I'm not using joist hangers on this side of the porch, the outside. I just don't want to. What I did was attach this board. I usually call it a ledger board. I don't really know the name of it, but it's just a board that the joists are gonna rest on, carries the load, and then we toenail, or in our case, we're gonna do it from the back. We're just gonna nail it in from the back side of the joist. So that's all this is, is a support piece to give the porch strength. Now, the stores around us didn't have any ledger flashing, so I'm gonna make my own with tape. Ledger tape, zip. So, Let me pull this back to here, and we'll get it lined up with the top of that. So here's the flashing that we made and basically if water got you know behind the siding it wouldn't get between the ledger board and the house this is a big mistake we've seen in houses water gets behind here it rots out your house and you'll never know it until it's too late so this keeps the water outside we put this on top because this stuff doesn't stick well at all i don't like this tape this sticks super strong and i just don't want this peeling off so that's what we have going on here and I think we're ready for floor joists, which Ashley has over here.
You have to go deeper. Is that the problem? Deeper! That's from the Aristocats. Well, I got my flashing on my posts and everything is ready. Now I really debated about how to build this because it is going to be a covered porch. So we're gonna have posts coming up and I was not sure if I should put them on the deck boards or on the framing before the boards went on. I'm gonna opt for putting them on the boards. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the decking down and then we're gonna set our posts. Yesterday, I tried nailing this deck down, thought it was going to be so quick and easy. It turned into a disaster. I mean, major disaster. It was so stressful, I gave up. So I only got half of it done. Let me tell you what's happening. My Dewalt nailer is not strong enough to punch those nails fully seated. 
It seems like every single nail I shoot is sticking up at least an inch. That's huge. And then I have to go through and I have to hand nail them all in, which is very difficult. The nails end up bending. I can't pull them out because they're ring shank. The heads break off. It turns into a mess. So I had to quit and I had to reevaluate the whole situation. I know I should have done screws. I wanted to do nails. Personal preference, I wanted nails. And since I already have half the deck nailed, I kind of want to stick with it for looks. But wow, I can't believe it. I mean, the Dewalt nailer, maybe one nail out of the whole board would go in all the way. All the rest would be sticking up. So it's just crazy. This wood is so hard. The ring shake nails just aren't going into it. So I went out and I got this. I picked up a new nailer. I know this is a cheaper gun than the Dewalt, but I'm gonna try it. I wanna see if this has enough power to push those three inch ring shanks into the deck. If not, then I'll switch over to screws. Now I already like that this comes with a cap. Some air tools, they don't come with a cap and dirt and dust gets in there. So I'm always happy when they do. I'll just tell you quick why I chose this one. I went to the store, I looked at all the nail guns. This one, was the most comfortable in my hand. That's it, it was the most comfortable. The Dewalt gun, it's never comfortable. They made, they made, let me show you. The Dewalt gun is a little bit heavier than this one, but also this flat spot right here, it's kind of hard to say, but the way this is all shaped, uh, it rests on my thumb bone, which is a, I have a large knuckle, and it, it it's really, it hurts rubbing on my bone right there. The same thing on this side, the gun is so heavy that it rests on your hand and this bump right here, it rests on the, my knuckle of this finger and that gets sore. So it's just a really uncomfortable gun to hold. But this one, look at, uh, this metal is so far away from my finger that it doesn't rest on my knuckles. And the same thing here. Uh, there's nothing here to rest on my knuckle. So after experiencing that one and how uh, painful it is to hold, I just literally went to the store and said, okay, this one feels good. And the, all the other ones actually hit me in one spot or the other. And this one is just made nicely. So we'll try it out. Same way. Oh no. Oh, I didn't know that was on rapid fire. This nail gun also is not strong enough to get through the wood. The wood is hard. The ring shank nails are just hard to push down in there. It's okay. I still wanted a new gun because I didn't like how that other one felt in my hands. This one's gonna be better. I might keep going. I don't know. I'll try to finish this board as painful as it is to hand nail them in, but I might end up just finishing the rest of the board with screws. We'll see.
hammering is a skill that I've never acquired. You guys always say I can do everything. I can't hammer. This thing is tiring. Uh, you know, I've read in old books how to hammer, believe it or not, and they would show how you hammer with your elbow, not your wrist. I'm a wrist hammerer, and that really wears you out. Um, I'm not good at aiming, but that's how they do it back in the day. They would have a good strike. It's just an extension of your arm, and you let the, the weight of the hammer do the work, and you're just swinging your elbow. Boom. I don't know. I'm just floppy armed. I can't do it. And um, I do a lot of baby hits because I'm not good at aiming, and it wears me out. Anyway, anyway. This method seems like the best method for me. Just get them started with the air nailer, hammer them in. Sometimes they bend, but I'm getting better at keeping them going in straight. You might also wonder why I am not spacing my boards. I know a lot of people like to put a gap. They stick a nail between it. That's a common practice. You put a nail between each board to gap it. You don't leave it in. You just put it there to space it. But if you, if you know, uh, treated lumber and you're familiar with it, you'll know that this will shrink and it will self-gap. A lot of people, um, they'll gap their boards. When it shrinks, you get mega gaps. I don't want mega gaps. So these will probably have easy quarter inch gaps when it dries. What you gotta do is just, you know, kind of keep in mind how wet the word wood is. You kind of have to get a feel of it. I can know by how it, how it feels and how it looks that this is very wet. And when I measure it, I'm getting five and five eighths to five and three quarters. This wood was five and a half inches when it was, before it was treated. So when it shrinks down back to the five and a half inches, it will shrink. You're gonna get natural gapping. It's gonna be perfect, the perfect gap. Now, if you're working with dry lumber, gap it. If you're working with treated lumber that's sat a while, gap it. You don't want to risk it. On a covered porch, this isn't going to get a lot of weather. It's not going to get a lot of rain. It's never going to be too tight. This is the tightest the wood's ever going to be. And since the wood isn't perfectly straight, there is a little gap on its own, probably a sixteenth or so, just because it, it touches in different spots. So it's not like dead tight right now but watch it over time i can come back to this and i'll show you over time these tight gaps will be huge that's why i'm not gapping also nails cosmetics i just wanted nails over screws and that's all the nails should hold plenty fine and i'm almost done we only have a, a few more boards to go i think probably one two three 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 and a half i'm not sure and then we can get doing the rest of the framing we made it to the end we got one more board to go i'm gonna have to rip this one but it feels good to be getting done. All right, it doesn't look like much, but the porch is decked out. So I got most of my rafters cut out, and as you guys can see, my bird mouth cut, which is where it sits on the beam, is tiny. Look at that little tiny thing. Barely a cut at all, but it has to be there. Because our roof is gonna be very low pitched, like super low. We're going for a one in 12 pitch roof. 
typically you don't want to see anything less than 312 pitch but since we have such a low roof already and we don't even have eight foot ceilings in our house we have seven and a half foot ceilings so it starts low and i don't want it to be too low over here on the other side so we're pretty much going as low as we possibly can but with the roofing we're going to be doing it's going to be totally fine it is what it is now i'm not like a framing pro so Figuring out roof trusses is out of my league. But what I did to help me out was I made a guide. A little hard to see because, uh, well, it's printed in black and white, but basically I, I went online. There was a website, which I'll link below, and it is a rafter layout calculator. And basically you can put in all your information. I knew how long it was from the house to where I wanted my porch beam, and I knew um, how thick my lumber was and I knew what the pitch was going to be. I wanted a 1 in 12 pitch. So you put in all those numbers and it calculates it and it actually draws out the rafter and it draws out the dimensions, the bird, the bird mouth, which is the seat cut where it notches out. It shows exactly where everything is. This makes my life so much easier. So I thought I'd share that with you guys in case you have to lay out a roof. It's not as hard as it used to be with technology. We can just go online, do the calculator, and you can print out templates and everything to cut out your rafters. So if I did it right and I put in the right numbers, these should fit perfectly. If not, I'll be buying 10 new boards. But um, um, you could even put in how long you want your rafter tails. So this is how far it's gonna be sticking out past. So that's that. The deck is secure and we're ready to start working on the roof but we're gonna end it here because if i don't the video is gonna get crazy long and i just don't like that so we're gonna end this i'm gonna start working on the roof and next time hopefully you guys see the roof coming together it's gonna be a fun project and it's gonna be nice to see the porch back together so thanks for watching and until next time take care bye